doing today? Come on in, come on in. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. Let me grab the chat really quick. I have to figure out how to do this. There it is. We're good, we're good. Okay. I'm going to grab the chat and move it over to a different window. Chat. There it is, there it is, there it is. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm figuring out my new system here. My new live streaming system. Um, okay, so listen, today's going to be fun. Um, we've got a lot going on. Um, in particular, what we're going to be working on today is kind of what we were working on last week. So it's kind of going to be a nice review for those of you who weren't able to join us. Um, we're going to be focusing specifically on Check one, two, one, two, audio input capture. I think that's good. Yeah, 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 that's good. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> hey, I wanted to say a huge, huge welcome to Mason Reese, Apichart S, Isabel, Rusty, Christopher, and Simeon. Welcome to Full Time Game Dev. They joined during the New Year's sale event. And by the way, that sale event is still going on right now for the next day and 18 hours. And after this, I'm not really sure when we're gonna be doing another sale event um, for full-time game dev. I do know that New Year's and the holidays and Black Friday, those are always really big sale events. So this is sort of the last big sale event for a while. So if you're interested in joining, I think there's 20 seats left. One day, 18 hours left. You're not only gonna learn the technical side of making games, but you're also gonna learn what Lord Grimm, one of my students who went full-time, what he learned, which is, how to go full time and secure funding from a publisher with just a demo. And hey, you're also gonna learn the brand new aspects of the course, which is if you wanna learn Unreal, that's included free. If you wanna learn Godot, it's included free. And also, obviously, Unity. And you can learn 2D and 3D with these courses. You're gonna learn 2D and 3D art, get fun learn how to get funding from publishers, how to do a Kickstarter campaign, and how to hit the Steam front page, C Sharp code, Blueprint, so, so much in this course. I think this is probably one of the most comprehensive courses out there. By the way, if you're a student, let us know what you think about the program in the chat. Um, yeah, it's really, really big. Really, really big program. Um, where is the, sorry, I wanted to show you the curriculum. Um, but uh, think about uh, people who sell courses is, they're usually selling courses, but they're not actually doing the thing. But the, one of the main reasons I do these, do these live streams is because I actually do the thing. Right, so I'm on my fourth, no, my third commercial release. Uh, we're working with 3D Realms. Um, they're a 30-year-old publisher, so we're really excited to be working with them. And that's what we're gonna be working on today. So I will see you guys on the other side. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So without showing too much here, we're gonna work on a new level here. Isn't this gorgeous, guys? The first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus specifically on how to create cinematic lighting, all right? Cinematic lighting being basically an alternative to realistic lighting, right? Realistic lighting is, well, you turn on the lights, right? You walk around your house or your apartment. Uh, but cinematic lighting is something more like this, right? You might not see something like this in an actual hotel. But in this hotel, in this game, to make it a little bit creepier, that's what we're doing, right? We're creating a harsher and more exaggerated light. And so that's what I've just done here. If we go to our light source here, let's see, it's right here. There it is. You'll notice that it's very broad. 
and it's very vibrant. I think we should probably go a little bit more vibrant here or increase the range a little bit. I wonder what would happen if I did that. It's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's keep moving forward here. Got some cool candles. I love the shadows, so there's not much I really need to do here with this scene in particular. So let's keep going. This one, I think we could probably increase the vibrance of our light here and also remove the cookie for this particular light, okay? I wanna be able to see that ceiling. It's a little too shiny up there, isn't it, guys? Wow. I guess the cookie makes sense, huh? Wow, what in the world? Way too shiny. Is it because the ceiling is metallic gold? That's the question, right? I think it might be. So let's go ahead and swap out the ceiling. That's just too too intense. So what we can do is we can go to our Pro Builder. And by the way, guys, we use Pro Builder in this game, Twisted Tower. This game is called Twisted Tower. It's basically Bioshock meets Willy Wonka. And in Twisted Tower, we're going to select by material here. There we go. Yeah, it looks like it's just a gold color. So I'm going to select our material here. Are there any other? Yeah, I want to be able to use this one. What's this called? Victorian Leather Wall Red. Yeah, but this game is called Twisted Tower. And so there's, I think, 13 levels, but each level has a variety of paths to choose. And so it's a big game. Um, let's leather, let's see where it is. Victorian Leather Red. No, what about pink? Purple? That's kind of cool. Let's keep that, okay? Just because I didn't like that intense reflection up there. Um, but what we do is we use Pro Builder. Um, Pro Builder is our tool of choice when it comes, let's pull this down just a bit here, when it comes to um, building on our levels. We don't want to create everything as modular pieces. What a lot of game developers will do is they'll have this piece here is one piece, this piece is one piece, this piece is one piece, and they build together an entire level with a bunch of wall pieces. Well, my theory is, why don't we just take this here and create a Pro Builder mesh out of this, and that's our base layer, right? And then we can just put everything on top of it, right? The reason these corner pieces are modular is because it's really hard to do a corner piece with Pro Builder. So anything that's more complicated you just do in Blender and then you create a prefab out of it and drag it into the scene. Okay, so this is super vibrant. There we go. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. It's kind of, it's beautiful, but I think it's it's uh, a little too distracting. So I like to just focus on one little area. So let's focus on this little dining room or this, this living room area, okay? I'm gonna take this and, actually I think I'll keep that. I'm gonna let the fireplace do our lighting for us. Lighting is important um, because, or it's, it's important to create some lighting principles for your game. Now, some people might not agree with one of the principles I'm doing for this game. However, if I'm being consistent with it, then there will be a consistent flavor. Um, and so what I'm doing is very few lights, sort of singular focus lights, okay? So in this case, we're gonna turn off this light here. So we're just swap out the variant, or swap out the, uh, the lamp. I'm going to turn this one off here and then this one off here. And so I could take just this fireplace here and I can scale it up like so. So it's nice and broad. Spooky. I like that. Nothing crazy here, guys. Maybe drop it down just a little bit, drop down the range so we have more of a vignette. I love that. That's very cool. Okay, this one we could probably turn off as well. Okay. And we'll be able to turn on a flashlight and see anything. And also, by the way, we're going to be mixing our lights. So, or doing a bake with our mixed lights. Okay, so all these shadows will bake in. So don't stress too much about the shadows. They will all bake in when we're ready to bake, okay? All right, we'll do some set dressing up here, but Felipe, our 3D artist, is gonna do a lot of set dressing up there, maybe some banners or something. 
That looks good. It's a lot more focused now. Simpler. And something that I'm really interested in lately is achieving less with more with less. Um, so we've got a similar vibe here, but it's more focused and it's cleaner and simpler. And so I like that. We're going to keep it very focused and simple here. All right. It feels too bright. You want me to knock it down just a tad? Sure, we can knock it down just a tad. There we go. All right, next in line, guys. I'm not going to focus on this. We're going to work on that in just a second. And <laughs> something I love to do is control my brain. So when I'm working on my games, I focus on one little area and don't, I don't stress about everything else. And so I'm thinking, what's the focal point for this little spot here? Well, I kind of like the idea of this door being highlighted. The temptation is to use something big like this as the focal point. But my, my gut is that we want to actually turn this off and turn off all of these lights. This one here as well. And all I'm doing is dragging in a new prefab. And I'm just going to have one light lighting this little area. Okay? But it's going to be bright. Okay? All right. So I walk in, and I always think about the player experience, obviously. It's a little too bright now, now that I'm looking at it. Drop it down like that. There we go. I walk through the doors, and this is what I see. And it helps to turn off your gizmos. So this is what I see. Pretty spooky. But... And again, we're trying to create more horror vibes for this game. So that's why we're being a lot moodier here. It depends on what kind of game you're making. But in my case, we're creating something pretty moody here. So when I walk down the hall through here, that to me is pretty moody. And we don't need to worry about that right there. Okay. All right, so far so good. Let's go into the bathroom. I'm going to crank down the intensity a little bit here. Project Patty says, walking away from my own project to get lunch and to watch. But I'm watching dev stuff, and that keeps the creative juices flowing. <laughs> I am Lord Star Builder says, I want to live in a place that looks like this. Yeah. Do you, do you guys want to know what, the, uh, what I told our team I wanted this to look like. Who can guess? There's one person who's very, very famous who has a penthouse. And I said, just try and mimic that. Who can guess in the chat? Who's the person who I said, mimic their penthouse? Go over the top. Who was it? <laughs> That's right. Dane got it. Yeah, I said, Look up Trump's uh, super golden uh, penthouse and just get inspiration from that. It's ridiculous and over the top. This can be brighter. I mean, come on. All right. Do I have a free course? Yeah, there's a lot of free stuff below. Um, you're not going to get the whole experience of the uh, full-time game dev, but... I have some individual little mini courses that you can take. I'd love to share those with you so they're below. Okay, so now that we, we've gotten this really moody vibe going, what we're going to do is go through the doors here and let's see here. We're going to kill a lot of these lights. And this is nothing, you know, when I kill a bunch of lights, it's not because I'm, I don't like what Felipe placed because Felipe placed all these lights. I want all the lights placed. It's kind of like if he was a builder for a home or a hotel. You'd want all the lights placed and you'd want them all to work and you can turn them on. But then as a director, I come in and I flip off certain lights to create a creepy experience. So that's what we're doing right now. And by the way, this is the last level I'm going to work on with lighting before I'm done with the lighting pass, which is going to feel really, really good because the lighting, this sprint took a long time. And so I'm really, really grateful to be almost done with that. Um, okay. These lights here, we could probably turn off as well. This is a little hot tubs experience. <laughs> it's 
Star Builder. Super Anime Boy says, Thomas, I finally enrolled in your program. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience. Thanks for your money. Um, no, but seriously, it supports the channel. Thank you so much. But really, I hope it. I hope you love the program and you learn a ton. It's freaking huge. And so I just encourage you, Super Anime, su super anime Boy, I encourage you to make your way through the whole thing, okay? Uh, uh, you don't have to go through the Godot stuff and the Unreal stuff if you don't want to. Or pick whichever engine you want to learn, but... Really go through it, because you're going to learn so much, I promise. Okay. Um, we're going to see if we can knock these off here. Do I have any that are off? Wow, I don't have any that are off. Why do I not have a prefab that's ready to be off? That's kind of weird. Well, I, you know, do I care? They're not that bright anyway. Okay, so this is cool, but watch what happens, guys. I'm a big fan of just, watch this, barely kissing the edges of the environment with light. Watch. There we go. And crank it up. Good. Hey, and let's throw a volumetric on this fella so it's steamy in here, but not too steamy. That's a little too steamy. So let's go to 0 0.01. 01. 01. 01. 01. <laughs> what in the world? Uh, Drop this down to 0.01. This is going to be 1. There we go, 0.0. There we go, okay. And then crank up the strength here. And then probably do 0, 0, 04, 0, 06. All right. I don't normally message, but thanks for your money, got me. Well, you know, it's it's a I I really appreciate people saying thank you for being taught in the program. People are very kind, but at the end of the day, you know, my my course, I'll be honest with you guys, my course has been a very successful digital venture for me. And um I'm encouraged by it because people every time I ask people in the chat what they think about my courses, they're always super encouraging. They love it. You never have people who are mad or say they got scammed or whatever they just learn a ton because it's being taught by somebody actually making games and that's important you know um, it's important to be taught by people who actually make games um, okay so let's see here that looks cool this is super sensual I'm getting kinda like you know feeling a little you know what I mean looking at this okay let's go in here Ooh. If this was really Trump Tower, we'd have a golden toilet. So let's see here. Maybe we can make this golden. Do you guys want to make this golden with me? Let's do it. Duplicate that. Is it a PSD, my friends? Let's hope it is. All right. Let's keep rolling on here. Hue saturation, crank it up to just gold, okay guys? Actually, you know what we could probably do? I'm gonna do this. We could probably just duplicate the material and just make it gold. We don't need to do it with the texture. So let's crank this up here. We have a bathroom toilet. Select material, duplicate. And we're going to call this gold. The golden toilet Easter egg. Hey, Thomas, I have some Unity asset packs that I haven't claimed. I'm an Unreal developer, so I have no need for them if you would like them. Oh, thank you. But no, thank you. I don't need anything like that. Okay, so what you do is you crank up the gold factor and then you turn off the metallic map so that it's just full metallic and then crank up the shiny. Dude, I want to sit on this. Or, there's another word that rhymes with sit. We could do that as well. Um, that's awesome. Okay, so let's make it look kind of weird in here. So what I'm going to do, first off, make this a little bit more vibrant. And then, and that will, that's global. If you change the material, it'll globally fix every single light throughout the game that uses that same material. But I'm going to crank up the intensity here. 
And I like the flicker effect. So we have a flicker effect in there. That's good. Ooh, that's cool. Maybe pull it over here so we can see that golden toilet a little bit more. That's sick. We do have poop, actually. <laughs> so, you know, we could have. <laughs> uh, it looks like a star crunch. Maybe that's what they had for breakfast. Right, let's move forward here. Um, okay, so this, this is interesting. So what I'm going to do here is instead of all four here, what I'm going to do is take this, turn these off, actually just not have them, and we're just going to have a beautiful, cozy, creepy sauna. There we go. Much better. That's spookier. All right. What did that come out of? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I have the greatest team. Felipe makes some incredible turds. Um, I'm going to flip this over. I don't like it that way. And we'll do center here. Why is it control snapping? That's weird. Uh, zero? No. Zero? No. Zero? No. What does it need to be? There we go. It works now. Okay, let's turn off the light so we can see. And we'll just position it up like that. That looks a lot better. Okay, save that out. All right, guys. So this is what we've made so far in terms of our lighting. Guys, isn't lighting so important? This is what it looks like without lighting or post-processing. And frankly, you know, that's what our world would look like. Our world would look really, really dull if you didn't have light and post-processing. Now, it's not really post-processing, but it kind of is. So like my glasses have a little bit of a blur. So when I look through my glasses, there's a blur with my light. Um, I should probably clean them. But there's also atmospherics and volumetric fog and there's bloom. The reason why light blooms, it's because it's scattering through the fog. The reason why we see glares is because we're coming through the glass, right? So that's all post-processing. So post-processing and lighting, don't think of them as cheats. They're not cheats. That's how you make something beautiful. And I, I don't know why I say that, but I used to think of them as cheats, and they're obviously not. Um, okay, so this looks pretty cool. We'll do a baked lighting pass in just a minute, guys. This, to me, feels a little odd. So I'm actually going to turn this off. I don't mind it being there. I think I may have put it there, and I don't, I, looking back, I don't really like it. I kind of want this to be gone, or maybe just off. I like it being very moody and romantic, okay? So where the F is this? Hold on. There we go. Set it to two by two by two. And we don't need an emissive. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these uh, lights here and we're gonna take the, do I have any point lights? I don't. But I'm gonna take this spotlight here and I'm gonna copy it. And just for this one little area, all I need is a point light. And we're gonna set it to point. Yep. And it's huge, we don't need it that big. Good gracious. Delete the, the volumetric. Turn on our, there we go. Ro set the rotation to zero. And then bring it down. And then we're gonna put it right here. Just so that it looks like the light is coming through those windows, okay? Crank down that intensity, my goodness. Pull it away, just like that. And maybe have it come down right here. We don't need it that intense. Yeah, we could probably crank down the intensity. Yeah, that's beautiful. Really creepy, I love that. Look at those cool shadows. Yeah. So it's a mix of a, a big old spotlight and a point light. And you'll often see that, at least in our games, where you have a, sp a spotlight doing one thing and then a point light doing another thing. So it's not necessarily realistic, but it looks beautiful. It's super dark. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and set the, um, 
This we could probably, we're gonna crank up both of these actually. Uh, but, but we're gonna mix the lights, okay? And that's gonna cause things to um, really spill and be soft. So you're gonna see a lot of soft lighting after we bake the mixed lights. You won't see a black uh, piece like this. This, you, the trained eye, I know that sounds pretentious, but the trained eye, when you work with lighting so much in Unity, when you see something like this, you're immediately offended. Um, <laughs> so that's what, that's what I am right now. I'm offended by this. But we're going to do mixed lighting and it won't look so bad. Okay, so that looks kind of cool. You just want to see some light in those shadows, guys. This isn't going to be so dark. We'll, we'll bake it in just a sec. But that's pretty great. Okay. All right, moving up, moving up, moving up. This is fine, I guess. Nothing, nothing too bad about it. I like this. This is cool. Yeah. I kind of feel like it'd be creepier if we didn't see all this light on the walls, but we can't really avoid that because we have these big windows. So I'm good. I'm good. And then we go through here, and I won't spoil it. But overall, this is great. Awesome. Bah. Very good. Now, what I want to do is the next phase of this live stream. Am I casting shadows on my point lights? Yes, I am. Uh, no, it's not a directional light right there. That's a spotlight. right? Um, so overall... Oh, hey guys, um, Gordon Arbor's here. Yeah, uh, Gordon Arbor is here, and then also Hector Hector Rodriguez is here. Um, Hector Rodriguez is the producer of the YouTube channel. What that means, when people, when I say that, what I mean is he, he helps me with scheduling events and managing the community and uploading videos and um, handling sale events and blah, blah, blah. He's what helps this remain a actual profitable business, which is always a good thing because that helps us to continue to make games. Um, and Gordon is the developer, so Gordon is doing a great job developing aspects of this game. Um, okay, so what I want to do next, I want to go through what I'm going to call a grimification process, okay? If the point lights aren't mixed, it won't show real-time shadows on the player walking by. No, but it will bake in the shadows from nearby objects. No, point lights, point lights will cast real-time shadows if it's real-time or it's mixed. Uh, but before we, before we go into the grimification process, we're going to talk about what grimification is. Um, let's go ahead and bake in these lights here. Um, and Jeff, I, I probably just misinterpreted what you were saying, honestly, because you're a smart cookie. You're a smart cookie. So if we go to lighting here, uh, actually, let's save this here, and I'm going to push, no, we're not going to push it. We're going to go to Rendering, Light Explorer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my baked lights here. So if I hit mode here, we have a bunch of baked lights. I'm not going to tell you why we're doing it this way. I'm just going to say we're going to set a mixed temporarily. I'm not going to explain why because I've talked about it a million times. But we're only going to do mixed temporarily and do a bake. Okay, so I can go to my lighting here. We're going to do two and a half indirect. And that's going to, let, watch, it's going to brighten up these shadows. Here we go. But we're only going to do it at three textiles. That's why it's going to do it so quickly. But let's go ahead and do that and take a look. Ten thousand hours of lighting virtual environments is experience, not pretension. Well, I haven't done ten thousand lightings, I'll tell you that. Ten thousand hours. Um, Looking atmospheric AF. Glad you guys pushed to learn the baking and lighting systems. Yeah. Hey, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Thomas. I'm writing my own game engine. Should I invest resources in directional lighting lights if I'm not sure that I need them? I can tell you we don't use directional lights at all in this game. So if it's an interior game, you know, um, yeah. So let's see. Did that do the trick, guys? I don't know. It's kind of like one of those things where um, uh, if somebody's like on stage and they're singing, but they're doing a sound check and they tell the, the engineer, they say, hey, give me a little bit more treble. Give me a little bit more treble. 
and then the engineer pretends to give them more treble and then they say that's perfect that's perfect that's kind of what lighting is uh, when you bake you're like did it do anything but you can go to certain elements like this here and go ah yes it did remember this pillar guys remember i said i didn't like it um it looks great so the shadows are very much baked in here um i'm cool with it being dark over here let's see the bathroom the cozy romantic bathroom Ooh, ooh. i just love jacuzzis mm, look at that have some drinks light some candles and if you need to use the potty It's just romantic. It's just really, 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 really romantic. Right? All right, guys. That is our lighting process. And by God, I think we're done. I think we're done with the lighting for the game. Next, we're going to go into the grimification process. Christopher Colley says, looking atmospheric AF. Oh, you already said that. Sorry. Um, Jeff McLeod clarifies and says, hey, what I meant was real-time lights. Worst performance, but looks great. Mixed lights, it bakes the lights for objects marked as static, but shows real-time shadows of objects at runtime. Kind of. Um, oh, but but shows real time shadows on objects at runtime. Objects aren't magnetic static. Well, Jeff, I think it's it depends on the um, what method you're using, the lighting mode. So we're using baked indirect, and all that does is it bakes the indirect light. It doesn't actually bake anything. Um, so that's that's the case here. All right, let's, let's delete our poop here. Jeff says, not kind of, exactly. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Maybe you're right. Okay, so let's see here. Um, if we take a look at the grimification process, what I mean by grimification process is making our textures look disgusting. And the way we're going to do this, now I don't want to grimify much of this, this, this penthouse here because I want the penthouse to feel grounded in reality. I want it to feel beautiful and sensual and clean. So we're not going to worry about this one. But what we are going to worry about is, let's say, well, let's go to floor negative one and see if we can grimify floor negative one. And this is something that Felipe requested from me because he's doing set dressing right now. And he said, it's really hard to set dress this game if the textures are so clean, but you want the set dressing to be dirty. Because oftentimes he'll add more decals than he should because, well, the textures aren't doing the work for us. Okay, so if I go over here and we grimify, let's say, this tile, it's actually not that dif difficult of a process, okay? Mm. I'm just messing with you, Jeff. I love Jeff. Jeff is um, always showing up in the chat, and he's always um, super helpful. All righty. Oh, no. Crap. Well, whatever. Dang it. We need to go back. I'm sorry. I totally forgot. We need to go to floor 12 and go to those lights we just changed and change it back. Thomas, you better be careful next time. Gracious. Oh, no. This one, this one, this one, all of them. These need to be baked. What are you doing, man? So the reason we're doing this, because I'm, gonna, because I'm just clicking, I'll explain why I'm doing this. I want all of our lights to be baked, actually, in their prefabs and by default. because baked is gonna be much more performant. So we're gonna keep them at baked. Some of them are mixed, like the fireplaces and stuff, they have to be, but a lot of them are gonna be baked by default. However, our light map remains the same. So we just got mixed lighting, we're good. To explain exactly what I mean here, guys, if you go to our lighting tab here and look at our baked light maps, this right here, 
This is just indirect light. Um, let's see here. Can I open you up in Photoshop? So we can see it. EXR, I don't think we can. Maybe we can. Let's open up Photoshop and see if we can. Uh, as transparency. Yeah. So this is our, our very low resolution um, indirect lighting pass. So lots of darkness. Okay. All right. Are we sparring in the chat? What's going on here, guys? <laughs> Jeff says, helpful means cranky. Thomas is cool. I am pretty cool. Thank you. All right. Bye, Star Builder. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. All righty. Um, okay, anyway, so let's uh, go to floor negative two now that we averted a catastrophe there. We're going to go to floor negative two. You know what we should do? We should go through every single level and mark certain lights as baked just because we know we don't need their specular information. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation. Okay, let's go to floor negative uh, one, actually. I'm so sorry. The grimification process. So again, let's look at this wall here. Could we make it grimier? Could we make this area look way more interesting? So let's keep the camera just right here. And Hector, I love that you're watching. I wonder if you uh, can, can, you know what, Hector, pay attention, because I'm going to teach you about um, how to edit albedos, how to edit normal maps and metallic maps. It's going to be fun, OK? So who knows what I like to work with? Do I like to work with PNGs or PSDs for my textures? Does anybody know? Are you always stood up? Uh, I used to, and now I'm starting to sit down more because my back. <laughs> I, I, I stood up to avoid back neck pain, and that went away. And now I have back pain, so whatever. Ever since I turned 30, all this stuff has just started to hurt. PSDs, that's right. Why do I use PSDs? Well, because of the following. Um, I'm going to find a cool little texture to use from like a free texture source or something. Um, we're going to type in a ah, grime texture on a free um, website here. That one's cool. Okay, so let's just use that. And I'm going to grimify this. There is a lot about grimification you need to understand, Hector. Firstly, if you're going to grimify something, you don't want something that's super distinct because it's going to look like spots throughout your text, throughout this looping tiling texture. You want it to be very sort of vague. So something like this. We'll use soft light here and we'll crank up the contrast. Um, we'll do multiply. Let's crank up the contrast significantly and then drop it down. Okay, you really want it to be pretty even. Now, because this is a grid of tiles, we might be OK with it not looping properly. But let's take a look. OK, so it didn't work. Why? Because we need to apply that new texture that we just created. This one's the dirty PSD. That sounds interesting. Dirty PSD. OK, so far, so good. You know, the truth is, though, I think we could add some grime to the corners. You guys ever seen uh, mold and mildew in like cracks of tiles? Do you want to do that? So let's do that. Let's uh, take uh, that. Ooh, that's, that might work, actually. And we're just going to add black here. Oh, I'm sorry, let's invert it. Selection inverse. And do this. OK? Then what I'm going to do is sta um, create another version and blur it. This is going to be interesting. I've never done this before, but let's, let's give it a go. And when I say I've never done this before, what I'm trying to say is watch how impressive, <laughs> watch how impressive I am. Um, 
Oh man, you think I'm joking, but that is that is called being manipulative. Yeah. I've never done this before, but let's let's try. Let's see if we can do it. Oh my goodness, guys, I've never done this before. And I really haven't. I mean, look how good that looks. Do I win? I think I do. Save. Take a look at the gramification. Oh my word. What do you guys think? Come on. Did I just impress you? I manipulated you, told the truth, and I impressed you all at the same time. Look at that. Pretty good. All righty. So, we don't want the mold to be shiny. Mold is flat, kind of rough. So we don't want it to be shiny. Very good, very good. All right, so let's go to Photoshop here and let's think about this. Okay, what do I want to not be shiny? Well, I'm gonna merge these all together and I could just take this and create a specular map. A specular map, when it's white, it's shiny. And when it's black, it's not shiny. This feels like it's gonna be a great specular map. Something like that. <clears throat> So as you can see, the black elements, these are going to be not shiny. And even the, the little pieces in there won't be shiny. We could probably crank up the brightness a little bit more. And I'm going to take this and put it in my alpha channel because Unity is going to read that alpha channel. As long as we tell Unity to do this, it's going to read that alpha channel and say, that's not shiny. So albedo alpha. Bert! So now that mold is not shiny. That looks really good, actually. I'm kind of impressed with myself. Disgusting. Oh, my word. This is why it's so important to be careful with your textures. That I don't like over there, so we might need to bring it down a little bit. We could even make it green, kind of. So let me show you. So let's bring it down. And then we're going to create another layer. Hue, saturation, colorize. Kind of a green, moldy color. And then we're going to delete, we're converting that to a smart object, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then make it black. And just some of them, we're going to do that green color. And we're just using a mouse, the world's greatest mouse. Who knows what mouse this is? Can anybody guess? What mouse are we using? Anybody know? Well, Mahay says, I would avoid doing that to the margins. Actually, I don't agree because, again, we're using tiles. So because it's tiles, you don't see that weird looping. Okay? Because we're using tiles, I don't have to worry about it repeating incorrectly because the brain can't figure it out. All right, MX Master 3 from Logitech. That's right, Rashad. Good job. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. Disgusting. Hey, guys, <coughs> let's go ahead and add some, some pieces coming down. So we could do maybe one here. Actually, let's just create one version. Watch this. Create one version, blur, copy that, and then merge. We'll do another blur, motion blur down at 90 degrees. And then we'll do another motion blur, just kind of angled just a tad, just a little bit. There we go. And then I can take this and sort of create little pieces here that are sort of spilling down the wall. You don't want it to be too unique. What I mean is, if it's too iconic in that one little area, you'll see the looping occurring. I'm going to merge all those together and we're going to create some harsh lines. Look, watch. Harsh. 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 
harsh. And just drop that down. All right, let's see if that did any uh, good for us. This is therapeutic, says Anon Truth. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Pretty cool, guys. I love it. It's really nasty. You want to do it to this? Let's do it. If I go to my PSD and I duplicate this, actually, let's see, is this even a PSD? It is, okay. Oh, no, it's not, this is a PNG. So let's save it as a PSD. Guys, when I add a bunch of files to Unity, do I need to delete the old PNGs? Yes or no? As it pertains to the build and the build size, do I need to delete the PSDs? Anybody know? Anybody know? All right, same process here, guys. Grimification begins. I take this here, paste that here, screen or multiply. And you just want to make sure it looks good. So I, I sort of like to, oh man, give me a sec, guys. Um, okay, so let's see if that, that looks decent with the grimification, just of that general overlay. Um, wow, Thomas, you achieved double A for the first 3D game. Amazing, man. Oh, thank you. Obviously, guys, I can't take credit for this. This is, this is all these models are done by Felipe. So I do the texture work. Um, but then again, Felipe will go to textures.com and find textures. I'll go in and just make it look that extra spice. And then I'll also do the lighting and I acted as the art director for this project. So Felipe and I spent a lot of time with me just annoyingly telling him what exactly I want. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and drag in this PSD here. Dude, I'm having fun. This is great. Okay, so if I open up this PSD, that looks good. If I open up this PSD here, you'll notice, again, I can grab these and just fill in black. Look at this. Wait, go invert, invert. So you guys, you gotta use your brain, all right? Think, where would grime occur in tile? Go to your bathroom, and you'll see the pubes all over the walls. You'll see your toilet that you haven't cleaned in probably three months. You'll, and you can study the grime in your shower. And you can see it occurs in the cracks, but it also sort of spills out onto some of the tiles. So let's click overlay here, drop it down. And remember, we want to blur it. Just like so. Merge all this together. And I'm going to just erase all of it with a gray, uh, mask. And then I'm just going to fill it in in certain areas. This one isn't going to look as good, I'll tell you that much. Let's save it out and take a look. It's not bad. It definitely looks really gross. Now this is a great example of why you want this bottom piece to loop with the top piece. So we will do looping because the tiles don't stop. They continue. We'll do some here as well. And here as well. Maybe, eh, that might work. Ugh, that's so gross. So gross. Now, if we make it look a little green and blur it a little bit more, I think we'll be good. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll remove some of it, though. This right here is kind of weird. And a lot of you are probably thinking, is this really worth it, Thomas? I would say this is very much worth it. And I would say game development in general, one of the biggest skills you can learn as a game developer is parsing when to make changes, when to polish, and when not to. Okay, that's, that's a huge skill you've got to learn, and it happens with practice, and it's also a marketing discussion, which is, okay, is this going to be more effective in a marketing asset, a trailer, a screenshot, than what it was before? Yes or no? If I'm making a horror game, is what I've done here worth my time? Let's get a poll, yes or no. Would this perform better in a trailer? Would this make the game look more like a horror game? Yes or no? Okay. Looks like, <laughs> 
Sunday said, it looks like a grime scene. Sunday must be a dad, because that was a dad joke. All right. Okay, so um, this looks fine, but if we made it green, it's going to look a lot better. <clears throat> you know what we could do is just a hue saturation layer like this. Put it over top of this and then mask out certain portions of it. So green, ugh. And then do a full black mask out and then just little pieces are gonna be green. Almost like moss and mildew, ugh. Save it, take a look. And that's why we're using PSDs, guys, so we can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'll love you forever. I'll love you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Who knows that book? Back and forth. Back and forth. Okay, so that's fine. Um, it's not showing up. Why the? We'll probably need to just go around to the other pillars. Yeah, you can see it better over here. Dead End Game says such a good improvement. For dirt and grime, it would be probably much easier to create a height map driven grime shader so you don't have to change every single texture. Probably. Can't do that though, I don't know how. Um, so you just do what you can, guys, do what you can. All right, merge these together. And remember, uh, uh, Hector, are you watching, buddy? Watch what happens. We're going to make the grime not shiny. So that's why we're cranking up the contrast here so that the only thing that <clears throat> is shiny is not the grime. Take that and add it to the alpha channel. Bing! Save it. And then set the albedo alpha to what's shiny. It's a little shiny, isn't it, guys? So let's drop it down. Very good. Was it worth it, fellas? What do we think? Yes or no? I think it was. Hey, let's go ahead and do it to this one as well. This is gonna be fun. So this one, we kinda of have to do the same thing. It's sort of the same texture. It's just not wrapped around a blend model. So let's open this up. Are you gonna make a deep story and deep meaning for the story? Yes, yes, that's all written down. Just gotta implement it. Guys, I'm on keto right now, and my fingers, I can feel my fingers losing weight. I just did this and I was like, whoa. Yeah, I lost um, six pounds in three days, which is not good. That's a little too much. Um, but uh, thought I'd share that. Has anybody ever done keto before? Yes, it's a fad diet, but it works. It works fast. I would say keto is the fastest diet I've ever done. It's crazy how fast it is. Okay, let's keep running. Wow, 352 viewers. That's a lot of people watching. Why do you guys watch my live streams? Cause any, can anybody let me know in the chat why you watch these live streams? Does it make you feel better about your own intelligence because I make so many mistakes? That's okay. Um, okay, so let's just fill in those uh, cracks. Look at that, that looks very much. Oh like my shower. Cause you're fun, man. That's from Serge. <laughs> Thanks, Serge. I wouldn't call myself fun. I'm probably one of the most unhappy people I know, actually. I tell my wife this a lot. I say, I don't really, I'm not really a ha I'm not happy, but I don't, I don't know if I want to be happy. I like, I like to work and I like to make things. It doesn't make me happy. It just makes me feel correct. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Does, is anybody by default, just you're just not a happy person, but you, you like to make things and that's what makes you feel correct and normal? Um, that's how it is for me. Game development can be lonely sometimes. Yeah, it can. That's why I really like having a team now because well, we get a lot done in a short amount of time. Like right now, Felipe's working on dressing this entire world with models to make it look more real. 
and more lived in. But so I'm not even worried about that because I know he's going to do a good job. He always does a really good job. D, D. McCoy says, yes, I'm, I'm that way. Um, happiness is fleeting, but sick video game is forever. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you. Okay, uh, let's do a hue saturation shift on this layer here. A little bit of a green color. Yes, yes. Drop down the brightness just a tad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to mask out all of that hue saturation, and then we're going to use a white brush, just like me, to fill in these cracks. All right, we're, we're making prog. Anything that's super thick, I feel like, needs to be green. Thomas, do you suggest any paid marketing strategies for games if someone had $10,000 budget to spend? Man, if you had a really good relationship with a PR agency and you really trusted them, and, they, and your relationship with them was why they wanted to work hard, not the money, then yeah, I would work with them. Um, a lot of PR agencies will take the check and they'll do the bare minimum to say they did what you said. And then when you don't get that many articles written when your game launches, they'll say, well, you know, to be honest, it was just $10,000. We have, we have projects that spend $100,000. And that, that's, it is justified because $10,000 is not a lot of money to spend in a PR firm. Okay, let's save this out. It's not, it's not, because a marketing budget is like 75 grand minimum for, for a, a published game, like a decently published game, like a mid-range published game. Okay, uh, that looks good. Let's merge this all together. We don't even have to test this. I know it's going to look good. So let's go to our, let's work on our smoothness map now or our specular, all right? Smoothness and specular are kind of the same word, unless I'm completely mistaken. Adjust our hue and saturation, drop it down, and then copy that. Go to our channels here. Paste it in our alpha channel, save it, and then we're going to just drag this onto this one. Bing! Wait, it's shiny. Well, make sure you set it to albedo alpha, and there we go. The gramification process is secured. This one does look the best, but you know. We could probably go ahead and just add in some darker parts. So like <clears throat> this blur Gaussian and then do a motion blur. This is gonna be interesting. Um, so I wanna show you guys how to do this. I like to take gradients like this I, I, or just blurry, <laughs> blurry little spheres. And what I like to do is place them in various locations and then cut one side of them to make them look really sharp. We could probably scale that one down so it's not so repetitive. Now this one, it needs to loop properly, but the good news is, is it basically does um, because we're not running anything into the edges, not really. Um, merge these layers together. We're gonna blur just a little bit more. Yeah, and then watch this. This is gonna make it look real. We cut here. Uh, we can even cut here, yeah with the poly, polygon lasso tool, cut, there you go. This one, is that is that actually, no it's not. This one, this, we can do it on this side here. Cut that off there too. Um, this one. We didn't do the cross hatching tile, just so you guys know. Um, this is from textures.com, and that's okay. There's there's no reason to create all the textures, and unless you want like a hand drawn game, eh, you don't need to worry about it too much, guys. Just get some textures from textures.com. These are paid for, so um, yeah. 
Yeah, that looks a lot better. So I drop it down a little bit and save it. And now things look kind of a little almost raised. It's almost like they're broken a little bit. Look at that. Do you see what I did there? Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Disgusting, Harry. Man, I'm kind of tempted to do something clever with this roof piece here. I, I, I use these a lot. Well, Felipe does. He, he places this marble texture on a lot of stuff. It's just so freaking clean. And so what I want to do here is make it look less clean. I'm going to do a tolerance of one. I'm sorry, f uh, 60? Maybe even 150? <laughs> no, how about... How about 100? Um, no, 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 no. I'm just BSing you guys here. There we go. I'm going to take this, I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to do uh, hue saturation. And then I'm going to uh, mask it out. And then I'm going to go to white here. I'm just going to sort of create some more. It's almost like stains. And just drop it down. Just so it's not so clean. File, save as a PSD. Right, guys? Save it as a PSD, and then let's drag this in here and make it, see if it worked for us. And, you know, we might be able to change up the, the, the smoothness map as well so it's not so smooth. Uh, drag that in here. It's fine, I guess. I, I can't really tell the difference. This might help. Let me see. Yeah, maybe. Um, hmm. I have this weird idea of, I don't know if I want to do it. Let's just, let's just change up the smoothness map, okay guys? So I'm going to take this, crank it up significantly so that the cracks are not shiny. Now I know what you're thinking, Thomas, those cracks are white. Hang tight, y'all. Keep going. There we go. I'm going to invert it. Hue saturation, drop. And then I'm going to take this, and this is going to be my smoothness map. Let's save it out and take a look. Albedo alpha. And then if we crank up the shininess, hopefully we can see this in effect. Yeah, it works. It's not perfect, man. I think what we need to do is get some sort of marbled, just an ugly marbled grime texture. Um, we can try this one here. And let's go back to our object here. And this will probably need to loop. You know, I could probably get away with doing this right here so that we don't have to worry about the loop. Crank it up significantly. And then if we made this black, we're not going to see any shines in this area. Yeah. Sorry, Photoshop changed their menus here. Save and then go to Unity. That's a little bit better, honestly. Yeah, it looks a lot grosser now. It looks old. I think that's all we really need to do with that marble. Okay, let's keep continuing down through the level and look for any grime we can find. Oh yeah, it just it got applied to everything. It's great. It really is. It just looks disgusting here. Look at that. Oh, let's do the let's do those moldy cracks in this brick as well. I did this uh, brick today, but I think we could probably do a little bit more. Come on. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select again. What are we going to do here, guys? We're going to select the cracks. And we're going to invert it. Okay, invert our selection. And um, ugh, it's a little too much. We'll do a tolerance of 25. There we go. Select inverse and then fill in the cracks. And then we're going to blur them. Good. And then just fill them in. Now 
Now we don't want them to go all the way to the edge here. Uh, Alex, Alexi said, did the story with Unity affect you where they announced strange, con strange conditions of use like an install? Alexi, do you want me to give you my honest thoughts on that? Do you guys want to hear my honest thoughts on the Unity situation? It affected me a lot, actually, and I can tell you why in a sec here. Um, we're still using Unity, but we had kind of a panic moment where we thought Unity completely killed their brand, and we also don't want to pay the runtime fee, so we scrambled and started learning Unreal. Um, we didn't consider shifting this game to Unreal because it's almost done, um, but we freaked out kind of, just like everybody else. And then what happened is I realized, okay, half of my business model and half of the funding, well, it's not half, I can't really tell you the exact numbers, but we, we get a, a good chunk of income just, just by teaching people how to make games, guys. And so, and I, I really appreciate that about those of you who have joined my programs because obviously they're, they're a great investment for you guys. I've, I've yet to hear otherwise, but it's, it is an income for our, for our studio. It's an income for my family. And I realized that a lot of people don't want to buy a course for Unity anymore because they want to learn Unreal. And so I was like, man, what am I going to do here? Um, it's really going to eat into our, our funding. And so we decided to go ahead and make some courses. So we made Unreal courses and we made Godot courses and included those free in the program. Um, we just knew that people would want to learn those as well. So that was, that was a, we, we scrambled to get that done. We really did. Um, okay, let's take that. Let's make sure that looks good. It might, it might look a little too unique. Mm. This is the fifth call I've gotten today. Man. Um, okay, so that's fine, I guess. It's a little too loopy. But we'll, we'll see how it looks with a, with a, with a uh, smoothness map. Okay, guys? All right, brightness, contrast. Does that make sense, guys? Oh, that's great. Ashley, that means a lot to me. Thank you. Ashley says, full-time game dev was a great investment. I appreciate that. Crank this up. And then also, we don't want the cracks to be shiny. So I'm going to grab those and also make those black. So really, what we've got here, this is our smoothness map. So as you can see, certain parts are going to be shiny. Certain parts are not going to be shiny. The black parts will not be shiny. So we can do that, save it into our map. And now it looks, see how it looks a little bit more elevated, guys? That's because of the smoothness map. It's very important. The smoothness map, it's like, it's like one of the most important things when it comes to textures is, is your smoothness map. It's what makes it look real. Look, I just want to run my fingers along that, you know? Um, All right. So good. Now it looks bad over here, guys. This is not good. This is not good. So when you see it this wide, it's a problem. So I wonder what we need to do here, guys. It's not horrible. Like, the floor looks awesome. I love the floor like that. It's just disgusting. Um, okay, but I'm not going to worry about it right now because we'll see how it looks with side dressing. This texture, honestly, it doesn't look good. And that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, I think we're going to just kill the, the, the blurry black part. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Um, what else can we do here? That one's so dark, I don't even know if you would see it. So I don't know if I'm going to worry about that gramification process. These are great. Felipe did a really good job on those. Um, let's fly through the level here. Yep, let's do some grime on these tiles here. Okay, we already have some grime and scratches, but we could probably add in just 
those ugly gaps like we've been doing, okay? So let's do that. Okay. Give me a sec, guys. I gotta handle a family emergency. Can you guys give me just a sec? Handle emergency here. One second. All right. Okay, so we have our, our blurry uh, lines here, our mildew lines. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing I've been doing, guys. Look, just filling in those lines here. I wonder why. Let me stack this a little bit here. Yeah, we need to stack it so that those lines are much thicker. Yeah, there we go. And then again, just fill in the areas we think mold might appear. See how it's like just magical, guys? Just filling in ugly mold in the cracks. Too much water down here, right? But again, we're not gonna go to the edges here because we don't want it to loop weird or tile weird. Save that, take a look. Ugh, gross. How does it look far away? It looks good. I don't think we should do anything else to it. I mean, it's fine the way it is. Oh, I love how grimy everything is. This is it's so important to, to go through the grimification process. Yeah. Yeah, the grimification process is it's great for all kinds of games, honestly. It just makes things feel lived in. Obviously, horror games are much more, uh, it's much more effective. Um, this black tile here is used a lot. And so we're gonna do a little bit of gramification on this black tile as well, okay? Um, it's a herringbone. Is it this? It's this, okay. Let's open this up, create a new PSD out of this. Oh, good, we already have a PSD, good, good, good. Um, I'm gonna do the same freaking thing. I think we already have this, actually. Uh, let's see here, there it is. Yeah, so this was one of my not so favorite ones, but we're gonna merge these layers together, copy it. We can just copy it over to this here, same texture. Okay. Save it and let's take a look. Yeah, it's just so dark. I don't even know if you'd really be able to see it. Um, we can also, yeah, let's grab that that uh, smoothness map as well from the alpha channel we created and just copy it over to this one. Save, take a look. Yeah, it looks a lot better now because these edges, much more 3D. All right, very good. All right, now I think we should enter play mode and just get an idea of how this looks. Does that sound fun, guys? You wanna enter play mode with me? Let's go. Hey, Richie, how are you? Yeah, Christopher, you, you mentioned something very, very important. Christopher says, gramification for me is pass three in dev sprints. If I know it works without it, the grime and decals will just elevate the experience, hopefully once I get to that pass. And that's exactly where we're at. We're actually on milestone three. 
So very, very similar to what you're saying. Um, we got all the, the, the levels done. We got the puzzles working, enemies working. Now it's just set dressing. And so things are just dirty now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look, guys. Um, I'm going to go over here to where our set dressing is. We have some set dressing on the left side here. Let's take a look. Sorry, it's really slow right now because of the stream. The game's looking great, Thomas. Happy New Year and God bless to you and your family. God bless you, Alex. Thank you. Oh, it's really gross looking. I love it. I fix that water over there. We haven't done a mixed baking pass yet, so um, it's going to end up looking much better. So, do you guys see how? How many of you have seen this level before the set dressing and the gramification process? Has anybody seen it? Um, it it uh, looks very different now because of the gramification process. All right, so let's see here. Anything else I need to worry about? Guys, isn't making games just the funnest thing in the whole world? It's like Minecraft on steroids. And all we're looking at is global textures right now. We're not looking at individual textures of objects like this one. Okay. All right, Thomas, how, where's, this is from uh, Andrew's Edge. Thomas, so how does your lighting work now with all the changes? Um, now the lighting is mixed lighting, meaning it bakes. Um, it bakes, oh, we need something here. We need to grimify this. Um, but also the lighting is, is much more sparse, but bigger and, and broader and, and more intense. So you have hotter locations, very bright with hard shadows, Anders Edge, but there's way less lights. Um, originally we had just a lot of lights, but it was they were dim. Oh, crap, that scared me. Sorry guys, man, whoo. Okay. Um, no, okay, there's an issue with our tile, but that's not, that's not a looping tile. I, I believe it's not. I could be, well, I'm getting shot. What did I get hurt by? Oh, I'm just, okay. Let's see if that's an issue with our looping, our, our tile, our tiling. It might not be. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's one different object. That's why. Okay, good. I'm, I'm fine with that. Hey, this is an indie game. Who cares, right? All right, it's starting to not be an indie game, by God. Look at this thing. Looks amazing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, grimify the, um, these vents, okay? I think this will actually be kind of cool because I've, I've been waiting to grimify the vents for a long time. The problem with the vents is they weren't scary because they felt they felt like you should be traversing in them, and and that's a problem. You you should when you're going through vents, you should feel like man, this this is not a good idea. Um, these are dirty, they're gross, they're rusty. All right, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and close all of them. Um, open it back up. This, by the way, guys, this texture here was from scratch. Um, this texture was from scratch, uh, which you're seeing here. So um, I, I'm pretty proud of it. It looks cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and rustify it. We're going to do multiply. 
maybe overlay, yeah. You don't want to look like a squashed PowerPoint presentation from your teacher. So let's make sure that's proper squashage. Let's save that just to see if it looks good. Don't need to worry about the looping because it's framed, or the tiling. We don't need to worry about the tiling because it's framed. So let's see here, what do we got? Already, guys, already. I mean, I don't know if I need to do anything else. But don't underestimate the power of a, a correct smoothness map. <laughs> Crank up the metallic smoothness. I think I'm going to brighten it up just a tad. This is why we use PSDs. Look how easy this is. Oh my goodness. This is so important. Texture work is so important. Okay, let's let's go ahead and uh and create our um smoothness map. Whoopsie. Crank up that uh, brightness significantly, crank up the contrast significantly, and we're gonna get these speckles of rust that aren't shiny. And again, you gotta be thinking about um, what's real, right? Well, rust doesn't have specular on it because it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a matte finish. So let's take a look here. <laughs> Did it do anything for us? It may have. It's, it's all sort of in your subconscious a lot of times. So I could be wrong here, but it looks like it's working. It's just so dark. No, oh, you don't need to bark, Jebby. It's okay, bud. Is smoothness map like a normal map? No, not at all. A normal map uh, determines how the light interacts with the texture and at, at certain angles. A, a roughness map, a smoothness map, or a specular map, the black is not going to be um, shiny. So you'll see shines in everything but, let's, let's crank this down a little bit, it was a little intense. This we could probably drop down just a tad. Good. Do you guys like that okay? Good, okay. All right, let's see how it looks over here. There's another vent over here we could take a look at. I'm getting lost in my own game. Yeah. It's all right, bud. No, sir. No, sir. Ooh, it's getting slow. Sorry, guys, just because I'm streaming. I just died. All right, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Oh, man, that was great. So Thanks for watching. And by the way, just remember, there's a few seats left. I think there's like 20, set 20. 20 seats left out of the 100 for the New Year's sale to learn exactly what I do, okay? Um, and I'm being serious here. I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. That's what this course is. This course took me a long time to create. It's constantly having content created and added for the course. You're going to learn everything that I've learned in starting my own game studio from my home office or for you for your bedroom, right? I'm for real about this, okay? That's what this course is all about, how to become a full-time game developer. And frankly, with just a demo, because I've done it multiple times, getting six figures in funding with just a demo. Okay, I teach you how to do it, whether it's securing funding from Kickstarter, securing funding from publishers, or if you want, you could just hit the Steam front page and make money that way. And I've done that before, and I could teach you how to do that. I've also done Kickstarter as well, multiple times, six figures. Um, Jeb, you're interrupting my ad read, buddy. Do you want to go outside? Come on. So check it out below. Two days left. I love you guys a lot.
massive program, very, very big. And if you've uh, been, if you are a student, let me know in the chat what you think about the program. And guys, I'll talk to you later. Take it easy. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.